And everybody was like, he's too big. Barrio's too sharp. Y'all seen what happened tonight. He made him look like he shouldn't have been at one point. Barrio's a double, double, double. Coming straight off the back from another destructive victory, Gervonta Davis kept his word when he said he'll be back later this year. You know I'm coming. Stepping back down to lightweight, he takes on a different kind of opponent this time. Not one most are familiar with but one that carries a history with his fellow adversary. I'm gonna knock this chunk the fuck out, like that. It's a battle of power versus power, puncher versus puncher. And though one is a huge favorite, the other still brings that element of unknown to the table. He goes down again! But before we dive deeper, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe as we give you a sneak peek into a collision of bad blood between Gervonta Tank Davis in Roland Romero. That's why lightning quick power! It now goes without saying, when it comes to the pound for pound hardest hitting punchers, Gervonta Davis is definitely up there amongst the top. And with his latest performance against Mario Barrios, proving he can carry his power through the weight divisions, it now seems he's created a Tyson-like appeal to his fan base after becoming notorious for knockouts. Though quite the opposite in personality to Tyson, Tank still manages to bring excitement and a genuine knockout authenticity to every fight. Still showing a tough chin that's yet to be really tested. The five foot six wrecking machine is proving to be a nightmare for everyone he stepped foot in the ring with. He's got crazy fast twitchies, he can box, but he's so aggressive and he's vulnerable enough to counters that, that it's actually exciting. With his background growing up on the rough streets of Baltimore, Tank's world eventually changed the day he was taken in by Team Mayweather. And with his head trainer assisting his progress alongside Floyd's mentorship, he amazingly managed to flourish, becoming one of boxing's main attractions. Oh, vicious right hand! Petrosa goes down! But it appeared that it wasn't just Tank that had a unique talent for boxing in that gym, but also making their own path to success were fellow lightweights Devin Haney and Roly Romero. a whole Good bunch time, of back and forth Good, with you and Devin Haney. What's going on with that? Devin Haney's a waste of time. I want Javante Davis. Well, I'm going to ask you, who you rather see? Rolly Haney or Rolly, Rolly Tank? Being competitive in nature and all under the same roof and weight division stirred egos into overdrive. And with back and forths on social media as well as in the gym, it was obvious that rivalries would soon form. <laughs> Whilst Davis and Haney still have no intention of fighting anytime soon, the surprising announcement of an unexpected matchup between Roly and Tank was something that people certainly didn't expect. They never talk about no skill, they talk about power. You are stupid. I can't even mess with your Though being the exact same age, Davis surpassed his gym peer by light years, as he became a three weight division champion with 25 wins, 24 knockouts under his belt. He is still undefeated. He is the new WBA. Roly still lingers as a prospect, and with only 14 wins on his professional record against low level opposition suggests he's nowhere near ready for the caliber of a fighter that matches the level of Davis. I know Broly didn't look too good, but he always has that X factor. You know, there's something about his power and, you know, he has good timing sometimes. So obviously I think Tank's gonna beat him, but I think he has a shot to knock him out. I don't think that fight's going 12 rounds. I think he's gonna go knockout. It could go either way because they both have the power, so. But making no mistake, 
Rolly is certainly not the type of character to lay down easy, regardless of his lack of experience. And with his confidence blooming at their recent press conference, he certainly doesn't seem intimidated by what's coming either. I was the one that forced it. I'm the one that activated the match. I'm the one that wanted this fight from what, 2018? Because I seen this motherfucker fucking Trump. You make a career off beating, beating up 126 pounders, 122 pounders. You were telling me since even about two years ago that you would knock him out in one round. Honestly, it's gonna last like 30 seconds. He's gonna run right into something. He's stupid. In physical stature, Rolly has the distinctive height advantage over Tank. But oddly, both have a similar reach. But the experience gap is far and wide as Gervonta takes a huge leap in front, starting his boxing career at a much earlier age as an amateur. And now an experienced professional that's faced multiple world and former champions. You know, I expect nothing but fireworks. This fight will resemble um, Hagler versus Hearn um, from the opening bell. You know, you got two guys, again, that totally despise each other. And um, again, that's what the fans want to see, nothing but excitement. With Davis staying reasonably active over the past year, facing Santa Cruz and Barrios, can we expect to see the best version of Tank that we've seen in a long time? A disciplined, sharp, and ready missile that can tactically blow opponents away at any given moment. Gervonta, Tank Davis! Bringing a rugged, gunslinging style to the party, Rolly's the perfect matchup for a fighter like Davis, as the come forward nature of both men will be something of a spectacle each and every time they collide. But Rolly, you know, he's a monster. You know, he comes and he fights. He's not going to go in there and box either, you know. So I, I think Tank is going to have to box him and find ways, you know. Uh, Rolly's just one, one style. Defense-wise, Tank does have a few tricks up his sleeve that were passed down to him by his genius mentor. Yet we've seen him take more punches than he should have in recent bouts. As for Rolly, his rough and rugged style can cause him to be a little reckless, leaving him open to possible counters that Davis may walk him onto. What a combination! Left uppercut and down goes Quajar for the third time! Referee. Questions will be answered if Davis takes this fight lightly. Whilst many are still concerned about the event's worthiness of being a pay-per-view matchup, Matt Gervonta could just be taking an easy payday to avoid the top names in the division. However, when styles make fights and bad blood spills as deep as this one, it's the type of fight fans will openly embrace, as long as both men take it as well as they can give it.